fantastic book. I mean, I have so many questions for you, but um, just Absolutely. right off the bat, it's a, it's, um, it's a, personally, it's a book that comes at a perfect time for my wife, um, who is struggling and, you know, I've gone through this journey myself and it's just, you know, thank you for writing this. I think this is, this is fantastic content. Well, and it couldn't have come at a better time, honestly, with COVID hitting people being nine, 10 months into this COVID journey. Now we all need extra resources to take care of mind, body, well-being. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's actually a great place to pick up the interview. So I, I got all that and, and we'll just, uh, I'll fill this part in and edit it later. Um, so if you're ready to go, I'll, we'll kind of launch with the next question. Yeah, I'm ready. So let's, let's talk about sort of your journey uh, from battling fibromyalgia to releasing that book. Take us on that path. Mm -hmm. What was that like to go through all of that? And, and honestly, give us a little bit of a glimpse of what it's like to live with fibromyalgia. It's something that we see advertised to take this medication mm -hmm. and here are all the side effects, but what is it like to really live with that? Uh, honestly, I don't have even a trace of fibromyalgia anymore because I was able to 100% heal myself naturally. So I have literally no signs or symptoms of ever having had fibromyal fibromyalgia. But when I was diagnosed with it, it was completely debilitating for me. And by debilitating, I mean, I lost everything in my life. I was no longer able to work. So I lost my job. My my childhood and family home was foreclosed on. My husband left me. I was separated from my kids. Um, yeah, bankrupt, less than $20 to my name, completely reliant on other people for support. Uh, I literally hit rock bottom. And I think the icing on that cake was that nothing that Western medicine tried to do made me better. And it actually made me feel worse. And I was working as a research scientist at the time, uh, working in the field of immunology and cancer research. So that was like an extra slap in the face to me to be pursuing a career in science uh, adjacent to medicine and not be able to find something to treat this horrible pain that I was dealing with. Like I couldn't even lift a pot and put it on the stove because even trying to lift like a couple of pounds was excruciating for me. So I, I, uh, I have a lot of sympathy for people that deal with chronic pain issues. And I totally understand how debilitating that can be, how it can zap your motivation and energy and just your will to try anything. So how did you take on the, the journey of, of overcoming it the way you did? Was, was this something that you, I mean, you were into medical science, obviously, but was this sort of holistic approach something new for you or had you already sort of been exposed to that prior to this experience? I had been exposed to holistic medicine ever since I was a kid. My mom was always into natural herbal things, uh, organic things. I guess you would have considered her a hippie back in the day. Uh, so I think that I always had that piece that was there for me, but I decided to really pursue it like very heavily. And honestly, that foundation for me started with mindfulness and meditation. And I attribute mindfulness and meditation to about 85% of my healing journey. Yes, diet played a role, but that was when I was mostly better. Uh, yes, other things like played a role like exercise, but really it was the meditation allowing my body to just readjust the nervous system, the sympathetic, the parasympathetic nervous system to come back into balance. That's really what helped me to get rid of the pain. And also things like therapy, talk therapy, having a ministerial guide to talk to. I really believe that when a lot of people deal with chronic pain conditions, it stems from some type of physical or emotional trauma that has happened in the past. And then 10, 20, 25 years later, if you have unresolved issues, these are going to manifest in the physical body. So being able to identify those things, uh, figure out some of these painful things that had happened in my past that I'd completely repressed the memories on and being able to let that go and deal with it, all of that helped me to move forward and completely eliminate that chronic pain. If I had not been able to do that, I know I would still be in pain to this day. Wow. That's, that's amazing. And, you know, I, I, I just want to say congratulations because I mean, it's such growth, such work, such effort. Um, it's hard. It's really it really hard does do. take a lot of work. I, this is why when people come to me and they're dealing with pain issues and they just want some sort of 
quick fix. It's like, it's not going to be that way. It's like, you have to literally change and adjust your entire lifestyle because this is a lifestyle issue. And it has to do with the way that the body stores memory. Like people think about the mind and the brain being one, but they're really not. Like the mind is interspersed through the whole body. You can have body memory. If you have traumas, those can pop up years later. If you have emotional experiences, those are going to pop up in like the mind body connection. And so you really, really have to work through things and be 100% committed to healing yourself mentally, if you want to be physically well. Mm -hmm. So to, to direct things towards the book, I guess, do you feel like this has become your purpose? And, and that is now why you're trying to help others find th their own sense of purpose? Absolutely. I, I would say this is strongly a part of my purpose is to help guide and educate people what they can do to stay well mentally, emotionally, and physically, and to understand these intrinsic interconnections between mind, body, and soul. Most people think that if you want physical health, you need to look at the physical body. But actually, if you want to cultivate physical health, you need to find the weakest link is that in your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health, once you start to fix that weakest link, everything else is going to start to fall into place. Wow. You, my, I had a question for you and just what you said just hit me so hard as, um, my weakest link is anxiety and it has such a physical, um, manifestation in my body that once I learned to tame that a little bit, the physical things started to go away and I, it just blew my mind. It's crazy. Oh, absolutely. When I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, I was also suffering from anxiety and depression and within, it took about six months, but six months of daily meditation, I never had another panic attack. I never had to take anti-anxiety medicine ever again. And it really started uh, alleviating those symptoms of depression naturally. So I know just how debilitating anxiety can be and having simple things that we can do each and every day just makes such a, a tremendous difference for staying healthy. Mm -hmm. I am a huge advocate of creating synergy, which is something I talk about in my book, The Soul of Purpose. So synergy is what one or two things or three things can you do that are going to have this compound effect to where it's like one plus one equals 10. Mm -hmm. So one of those things, for example, since you mentioned anxiety, I love to start my day with a cup of tea. So tea is excellent for many reasons. One, black and green tea do have antiviral properties, so they can help you uh, boost your immune system and stay healthy and ward off things like COVID. But tea also has a compound called theanine, which mm -hmm. helps to relax you and calm you down naturally. So you're still going to get a little bit of a boost of energy from the caffeine, but you're also going to have the theanine, which is going to calm you down and help you to relax. And to me, there's no better way to start the day. So that one simple thing is helping me to stay healthy and boost my immune system, relax me, give me a boost of energy and just start things off uh, on a really even keel. So I am such a huge advocate of creating synergy because 24 hours is not enough to get everything done. So we need to learn how to use our time super effectively. Mm -hmm. So you're mentioning synergy and right at the beginning of your book in the introduction, you made um, a comment about, um, you know, millennials and Gen Zers, um, they're interested in well-being more so than they are luxury items. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think I'm kind of in the middle um, where, you know, I grew up with a lot of people who, you know, you just work as hard as you can and you stuff all those emotions inside and you don't let them out and you just get the job done. Um, you know, but a lot of younger people are figuring the synergy out. Um, in well-being. So I wanted to ask you, I mean, I, I was on the other side, I cared about the luxury items that you talk about, talked about, and I made a shift. And now I'm more concerned with my well-being. But are you seeing this, um, you know, holistically people all across the board, making this shift? Or, you know, to be blunt, is this something that over time, it'll go away as the older people disappear and the younger people bring that new mentality to the world. I think that we're really blessed to have all the younger generations focusing so much on health and wellness, but I am seeing an overall societal shift 
with more people in general, regardless of their age, being interested in cultivating mind, body, well-being. And I think it's just, there's so many stressors and so many problems in our time right now that people are looking for extra support. I mean, maybe 20 years ago, living the American dream was a reality, but now how difficult is it for someone who, who wants to buy a house? Uh, who actually has job security and stays with their job more than seven or eight years at a time. And e even that is a stretch for a lot of people, especially if you live in a big city. So I think that lifestyle has just changed so much in general that we don't have the same platform of support that we used to. And people are looking for ways to cope naturally. Mm -hmm. So I do suspect that this is just going to continue to evolve that wellness, well-being is going to be the primary focus. I think people are always going to want luxury goods, but this is the first time in our society that we've seen that collective shift to where people actually want things like mind, body, well-being that are not physically tangible more than they want those tangible luxury items that you would associate with Gen X and the boomer generations. Mm -hmm. I found it fascinating how you make the connection between uh, mind, body, wellness and purpose and, and how purpose can really drive a lot of that. Can you talk a little bit about that connection and, and why that's so important to, to, to just have a purpose? Uh, absolutely. So I think a lot of people don't realize these intrinsic connections between purpose and health and between spirituality and purpose and health. And if you do a deep dive into traditions like Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, uh, they're, they're kind of, they're there, but they're also a little bit veiled because Ayurveda pretty strictly talks about health, whether it's mental health, emotional, or physical health, but really, uh, purpose is this link between spirituality and health. If you look at the idea of your soul or this causal seed that causes you to come into existence, you can look at purpose as that causal seed that creates everything about you. So it's going to create your entire constitution. I, I talk about the five elements in my book because that's foundational to both Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, which are both ancient healing traditions. And so your purpose actually creates your elemental type and composition. It gives you your innate talents and strengths and gifts and even your weaknesses, and it shapes your physical body type. Like I can normally look at people and get an idea of just what your constitution is just by like looking at your facial structure uh, and your body type. Like that is literally how perfectly you're made. So if you live in alignment with your purpose and you live in alignment with your innate talents and gifts, these things are going to naturally keep you more physically healthy. Those are the same things that science now knows boost your immune system, helps to regulate your hormones, helps to keep your microbiome healthy that we have these fundamental connections between happiness and meaning and health. So living a purpose-driven life is an excellent, excellent way to cultivate well-being in everything that you're doing, whether it's for your relationships, for your health, uh, for cultivating a successful business. It really doesn't matter. Purpose is foundational to all of it. So the $64,000 question, of course, then is, how do we find it? Uh, this is something that I know so many people wrestle with. I'm, I'm now in my forties, half my life is gone. I feel like I've just, I've raised my kids. I've gone to work. I have the house mm -hmm. now. What? So where do we, where do we find that purpose? How do we discover that? So I think that one of the easiest ways to identify your purpose, it's twofold. It's to look at your innate talents and gifts and how those like connect uh, how those connect like to your five elemental type. So once you're able to like identify what your constitution is, you can understand the, the different sorts of talents and gifts that go along with those elemental types. You can identify what you're really good at, what your weaknesses are. Once you're able to do that, you can like really start to see how all the pieces connect in that. Like me, uh, I, I'm a writer, obviously. A lot of my stuff is very earth or fire or space element, but a lot of earth and fire. So when I look at when I look at all of my attributes, it becomes easy to understand why I have pursued a career in writing and in speaking and why I like things that are related to music and why I like things that are tangible and tactile. But on the other side of that equation, we also have to understand, the experiences that we've had, the things that bring meaning, the painful experiences that we've had in life. Uh, that is like the other half of the equation because we are normally going to feel a drive to use our talents 
to make the world a better place for other people. And in particular, to help people not to suffer from the same things you have suffered from yourself. So when you take both of those things together and you can say, hey, these are five skills that I'm really good at and I can utilize them in all of these different ways and then combine it with those different experiences that have helped to shape you and make you who you are, you can find uh, ways to live your purpose that's gonna really, really cultivate meaning for you. And the more that you grow, the more that you heal, the more that you resolve those uh, inner painful issues, you may find that your purpose grows and gets redefined over time as well. And that's completely natural too. But I would say dive in, learn your elemental constitution, learn how your strengths and talents and gifts uh, relate to that. That is going to be foundational way to start identifying your purpose. Because just by doing those things, you are going to start to cultivate good health and be more in alignment with who you truly are. So it, it may oh, sound like really simple. And I, I don't, I don't want to say like that this is really simple, but it is a formula that works. If you do like the first half of the equation, and then you start like to look at your life and what has brought meaning you can, you can always find a way to move closer towards your purpose. Even if you're not able to completely shift your career, like you can start to work into living a purpose-driven and meaningful life. So I, I have, um, I'm in, I, I love, love the idea. Um, I just a little backstory. I, I, I lost my purpose overnight about six, seven years ago. I, it was all in my job. The job went away my purpose was gone and I had to find it again. And what I struggled with and, and what I I would love to hear your take on it is, you know, as you're discovering your purpose, as you're, as you're, you're trying to find it and work through this process, there's, there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be moments of, um, for me specifically, you know, really, really dark holes where, you know, a small mistake that in the grand scheme of things was not a big deal would, would completely put me down into a dark hole where I wanted to give up, you know? So as people are finding their purpose and they're, they're on this journey, you know, how do they, how do they stay on that journey and how do they, you know, overcome some of the hurdles that come with a lot of this work, which is really scary work. It is really scary work. And I think a big part of that is not putting all of our eggs in one basket and making sure that we cultivate hobbies and talents and other things that help to bring meaning and joy in life. Uh, A lot of times we can get so focused on work that it does become everything. And if we're not pursuing other passion projects on the side, like I, I do pottery, for example, I sing, I dance. If I'm not doing these things, I will be stressed out, uh, anxiety prone and depressed. So the more that you're able to have a hobby and you're doing it consistently, something that you enjoy, it's actually going to help you be more focused when you are actually at work and doing your job. And so this is, uh, this is the same with anything. I would say, make sure that you are using your time well, that you're doing things that you enjoy. Uh, I, I hope that everyone enjoys their job. We don't all enjoy our jobs. And especially if you don't make sure that you are taking extra time to compensate for that, like with having some hobbies and talents, but it, it literally allows those other parts of your mind to like reset and come back into balance because you can't use that same muscle all the time, whether it's your, your physical muscles or like your mental muscles, you need to give them a break and go do something else for a while. That is going to help you to not get burnt out. And to, if one thing goes wrong, you're going to have all of that other stuff there to help you feel supported. And there's a lot of science in that. Uh, The mind really craves consistency. So the more that you can cultivate consistent routines, like throughout your day, uh, you are going to have that as a platform for your mental health and well-being. So if one thing goes wrong, hopefully you're going to have eight or nine other things that, that like you're doing throughout the course of a day or a week that are going to help to keep you mentally stable and happy. Mm Mm-hmm. You, you, you threw me off my question too, and it's two parts, um, but I think they, they may be connected. And, and one is about that routine. I notice for myself uh, when I do, I, I know what routine works for me. And when one piece of it falls out, 
it's much harder for me to, to go, oh, well, the next step is just do what you would normally do now. It's more, I'm more inclined to say, well, that's out the window. There goes the whole day. Mm-hmm. I think a similar thing applies to, I've, I've heard you talking a lot uh, in the last few weeks or, or seen um, writings from you about New Year's resolutions. We, we are at the point where pretty much everyone's probably given up on them by now. That's How true. do we overcome that, that pull to just give up when something goes wrong or something isn't working the way we want it to. And, and I think the other part of my question is as you're doing this deeper work about, you know, who you are and how it ties into your purpose, that can, uh, I, I think there, for me anyways, there are a lot of voices that are the negative ones that are the dark ones that say, well, you don't deserve a purpose or you're, you don't have a talent. You don't have something you're passionate about. So it's, it's sort of these negative forces that, that pull us away from the things that a lot of times I think we know what we're supposed to be doing. How do we overcome those? Everyone's going to have those negative voices in your head, but you also are always going to have positive voices in your head because everyone has a purpose. Everyone has a reason for being alive and everyone has their innate talents and strengths and gifts, just like everyone has weaknesses associated with them. You literally cannot be born or be a human being if you don't have some form of talent or purpose or reason for being here. So your journey is to find your purpose. And yes, most of us have forgotten about our New Year's resolutions and not stayed with them. And it's because we have this all or nothing mentality behind it. Like, oh, I messed this up for a couple of days. Therefore, I'm just not going to go back and do this. Well, being successful is never about perfection. And that is this huge flaw in like the Western mindset that to be successful, you're going to be perfect. Well, successful people are the people that fail and fail often and get up and try again and keep going. So I would say, try to get away from that all or nothing mentality. And if you miss a day on your workout, just be like, okay, I missed a day on my workout. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to fix that the next day. Or if it is the next day, you know, work on resolving that then you cannot be perfect with anything. And if you expect yourself to be it's going to feel like that you're failing at everything that you do. And that's just going to bring more of those negative voices into your head. So try to manage those personal expectations and know that you're not going to do something consistently every single day. The mind will even give you resistance to doing something every day, even though it's good because it takes energy to build a habit and to break an old habit. A habit is not doing something consistently, right? The more that we do something three or four days in a row, then we take two or three days off. That's the habit the mind's gotten in. So it's going to take energy to break that. Understand that, show yourself some compassion and love and know that it's going to be a journey to get to where you want to be. And if you miss a day on your workout, why does that matter? Your workout's not the end goal. The end goal is cultivating better physical health and well-being. So you're just using that as a tool. So basically don't like, don't get lost in the weeds, you know, focus on your end goal, realize all the things that you're doing to help you make progress towards that and just get up, keep going and don't look back ultimately. And I think the third thing to get rid of those voices, because you talked about that, there is so much negative media right now, whether it's the news, uh, politics, whether it's all the bad news about coronavirus, all the bad news about the economy, we need to find a way to consume more positive media in our day and stay away from this constant drone of negativity that's in the background everywhere. If you're able to stay away from that stuff, at least most of the time, it is going to help you cultivate more mental well-being and to be able to focus on those positive voices. I know we're at the end of our time here. Um, Is is there anything you would want to, is there anything we didn't get to that you want to make sure people know any any final takeaways and and where can we find out more about you uh, online as we wrap things up here? I think the most important thing that I want people to know is that there is an intrinsic connection between your spirituality, your purpose, and your health. And if you want to cultivate better physical health, mental health, emotional health, really, you need to start with a platform of mental health and emotional health. Like these things are your foundation for success with everything else. Like do not neglect them in your journey. Do not neglect your spirituality or your religion. However, it is that you identify with yourself or a higher power or whatever you call that. This is all super duper important to being your best possible self. So don't neglect these seemingly little things because they're not little. 
and find your purpose. That that's one of the most important things that you can do in 2021 to make your life better. Love it. That's, that's great stuff. Thank you so much for your time. A fascinating conversation. We had a thousand more questions we would have loved to get to, but, uh, but there we are. Thank you so much. We'll get this posted I, probably in the next week or two, and I'll send you an e email with the links and everything. Sounds great. And thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And great work on the book. Thank you. And great. let me know.